Hello there everyone, and you have reached day 54 of daily episodes from the show Too Long Didn't Scroll, the show for you to get your daily news fix in the medium of a quick and listenable podcast available on platforms like YouTube and most podcast apps. Use this show to find out whatever happened that made international news on any particular day. Links to the podcast and to the news articles consulted are all in the description. We start the events of March the 14th of 2023 in the country of Russia, where the first aerial altercation between the Air Forces of the United States of America and Russia ever since the Cold War may have occurred. Tensions between Russia and the Western world have been at an all-time high since the Cold War, as sanctions and restrictions on Russian affairs continue amid the Russo-Ukrainian War and its uncalled-for invasion of Ukraine. America has shown its support for Ukraine against Russia through supporting it through military and humanitarian means, including through sending several monetary aid packages and military vehicle designs. However, this new conflict between America and Russia may continue into escalation as, as of around 7 a.m. local time, an American MQ-9 Reaper drone flying over the Black Sea that borders the disputed territory between Russia and Ukraine of Crimea. A group of two Russian Sukhoi Su-27 fighter jets intercepted the drone and began dumping fuel on it and performing erratic maneuvers around it, which confused the drone's flight path and damaged one of its propellers. The American forces controlling it stated they had no choice but to bring the now uncontrollable aircraft into a crash landing into the water. America has accused Russian forces of being quote-unquote reckless and environmentally unsound, though only provided routine operations as the reason for the drone's presence. Russian officials have stated that America is at fault for breaching the so-called temporary boundaries in the Black Sea. Regardless of who is at fault, this aerial altercation is the first incident among the air forces of America and Russia in decades since the Soviet Union's existence as renewed tensions between the two powers continue to escalate. Meanwhile, in the country of Pakistan, protests have erupted across the country over the suspected fate of former Prime Minister and current Pakistan Tariq E. and Saf Party, or PTI, leader Imran Khan. Khan, a former cricket athlete and prominent politician, was the Pakistani Prime Minister for nearly four years between 2018 and 2022. His premiership was marked by his attempts to stabilize the Pakistani economy, including through bailing out the economy to settle its imbalances through the International Monetary Fund, increasing tax collection, and committing to a green, environmentally sound economy. During his tenure, Pakistan did experience some amount of economic growth, though his premiership has also been marked with some controversy. The Pakistani government was accused of increasing levels of corruption under his leadership, as well as victimizing political opponents and suppressing dissent. Amid a 2022 constitutional crisis, Khan was ousted from power in a no-confidence vote and later charged by police after his accusations that Pakistani authorities had detained and tortured in aid. While Khan's whereabouts are currently uncertain, it is now believed that he has been arrested and taken into custody, prompting his supporters to take to the streets to advocate for his release on his encouragement. As protests intensify in cities like Islamabad, Peshawar, and Karachi, police have begun using water cannons and tear gas in an attempt to disperse the protesters. Some members of the PTI party have also begun being taken into custody as crackdowns on Khan's assets begin. Moving on over to the country of Argentina, apprehensions over the health of its economy will likely intensify today, as, according to a National Statistics Index report, national inflation has reached new highs of a whopping 102.5% over the past year, brought on by the recent inflation surge intensified by events like the COVID-19 pandemic, international economic slowdowns, supply chain mismanagement, and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Argentinian Consumer Price Index, or CPI, has risen at an average of around 6.6% each month. This is the first time Argentina has suffered such an inflation surge like this since the early 1990s, as residents lament the rising cost of practically everything, while attempts to curb the effects have continued to fail. Argentina is now experiencing some of the worst inflation rates in the entire world, with rates almost exponentially larger than in countries like America, Canada, and China. This sentiment of global economic crisis continues with the announcement of Meta Platforms, the owner of platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, that they will be cutting a further 10,000 jobs from its workforce over rising inflation and interest rates in America, and global economic and political insecurity that threaten the stability of its own business. We now center in on the ever-emerging industry that is artificial intelligence, specifically focusing on the makers of the popular AI chatbot ChatGBT by OpenAI. ChatGPT currently runs on the GPT-3 family of machines and language learning models, making use of advanced learning to become powerful enough to write human-like text and engage in, sometimes unadvisable, full conversations. ChatGPT today has received a new upgrade with the introduction of GPT-4, which will allow the chatbot to become able to process up to 25,000 words and receive and process input from images rather than just text itself, in addition to more fine-tuned comprehension and reasoning skills, which, according to OpenAI, 
are anticipating ChatGPT to become even more powerful and advanced than it already is. GPT-4 capability will be rolled out to ChatGPT Plus subscribers first, while OpenAI warns that ChatGPT can still be susceptible to giving out misleading or false information. In other news, five people were killed and 11 injured, including a regional governor, in Somalia after a suicide bomber drove a car into a guest house in the city of Bardera as the Somali civil war rages on, and the Lithuanian parliament has voted to officially declare the Russian private military company, the Wagner Group, a terrorist organization over accusations of war crimes during the war in Ukraine, including torture and execution of civilians.